Hello, and welcome to the Source One Countdown to ISM 2016 podcast series. Consider us your on the go source for the latest insights in the procurement, supply management, and strategic sourcing industry as we get ready for the premier supply chain event of the year. Today on the ISM 2016 podcast series, we sit down with Howard Levy of Zimmer Biomet, who's the co chairperson for ISM 2016's People Track and the moderator of a special panel called Transformation Superchargers, What Private Equity Expects from Sourcing Leaders. Howard, thank you very much for joining the uh, podcast series. It's a pleasure to have you. Thanks, Ken. So we had the pleasure to sit down with Nassim Malik of MRA Global Sourcing, your uh, partner in, uh, as a co-chair for the People Track. We talked about his vision for ISM 2016, which is, as we speak, uh, a little under a month away. Uh, Nassim talked about how the message of the conference is the same as it was in recent years, that results matter and the way you achieve those results matters. So ISM's mission being to further the function of supply management. But what does the annual conference mean to you personally? Well, as a leader of a sourcing organization, I think it's really important that you expose your team to best practices, and there's really no other event on an annual basis that has the capability to do that. So, for example, this year, I'm doing something different. I'm bringing 15-plus people from my sourcing organization with a variety of backgrounds, some more experienced people just to make sure they're on the latest as far as the cutting edge, and some folks have come into my organization from operations, finance, or even uh, engineering, and they're brand new in sourcing. So I think this is an invaluable experience to expose them to best practices from a starting standpoint. How are they looking forward to it? Well, it varies. I think uh, everyone is looking forward to it because it's an opportunity to uh, get out from the office, get out from the day-to-day battles that we have, and get some perspective. So I think that's probably a better question for when they come back. Sure. See what they what they got from it, but a lot of them uh, have not been exposed to this kind of conference before. So I think it'll be a positive experience. Given that there's um, a lot of sessions happening concurrently at the conference, um, how are they prioritizing which sessions they should be attending, or or are they dividing and conquering? How are they going about that? Pretty much, I'm going to let them decide what is the greatest value add as they yep. go forward. We are going to take advantage of the team experience that ISM has put together. Uh, with our group, so we're going to participate in a couple of team experiences, so that should hopefully further bond the team as they go through the session. So you um, and Nassim are the co-chairs of the people track, so as we know, the the conference is divided up into various tracks, do, don't, risk, reward, and so forth, and this one is focused on people or optimizing human capital strategies and also on just personal and professional advancement. So I asked Nassim the same question, but what is your vision for the people track? Well, you know, there's nothing more fundamental than people and the talent in the organization to make a difference. You know, in the year 2016, there's a lot of different tools that people use. There's a lot of analytics. But when it comes down to it, the bottom line is really people making the difference in the organization and giving you that competitive advantage. And, you know, the world is changing dramatically that you really need a different talent base And the session we're pulling together, I think, gives you a 360-degree perspective, whether you're a new person coming into sourcing a young person and want to understand how to better advance your career track, hear from some of the best experts, such as uh, the folks who have been in the business 30 years plus in our signature session, where we'll have a group come together and provide their best practices and thoughts. We'll also have the perspective from people who are on the fast track, uh, a younger group coming up to the next level, and also what do the sourcing leaders need to do to attract and retain talent. So it's from many different perspectives that we'll have the people track, and I think it will be valuable for all the attendees to take part and understand what's going on in that regard. That makes sense. I mean, I'm hearing from just from you personally that you're bringing these people in who, uh, from your organization, who haven't necessarily been with sourcing, or they, you know, all different backgrounds. And here you are as the co-chair of the People Track, and it's it's all uh, very much in alignment, right? You're focused on uh, enabling your people, getting them the right exposure, uh, because as you said, they're they're the greatest asset. Yeah, I mean, again, I think we sometimes forget about that, and sometimes some of us, you know, who have been in sourcing, such as myself, 30 plus years you know, are tied to maybe a a different paradigm. Hmm. And the reality is, you know, we have to have the right culture, the right skills, the right training for people to succeed. 
And I think what you're seeing, you know, is a higher level of competency, capability, and strategic skill base that's coming into the sourcing organization. And it may be coming from other functions that, you know, aren't traditionally purchasing. So that's particularly pivotal is how do you get these other talented people with project management skills, right. under people who understand your products, et cetera, the right core sourcing skills. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So at the conference, you're also moderating a panel on the role of strategic sourcing in the world of private equity. Uh, I understand that this is a new topic this year, so I kind of have a two-part question. Why is this topic, A, of interest to you, and secondly, why is it of interest to the larger procurement supply management profession? Well, as far as my interest, uh, I did come into a private equity for the first time later in my career um, with Biomet, the predecessor to Zimmer Biomet, mm. and I found it to be very exciting kind of environment and a lot more hands-on, at least in my personal experience and some of the larger corporations that I had been with. So I thought this could be something of greater interest uh, to the bigger group, and I think of interest to the group is the reality that more and more companies are being owned by private equity. Hmm. So as a supply chain professional, I think a lot of people need to have that better insight of what really makes the private equity companies tick, what's the skill base you really need to bring to these organizations that may differentiate it from your prior experience. Going along this, that thread then, why is sourcing in private equity different than in other companies? Well, I think it depends. If you're coming from a smaller entrepreneurial base to begin with, it may not be all that different. Hmm. My experience, though, were, were larger corporate companies, and the speed of private equity and the expectations uh, of delivering on the results um, seem to be much quicker than my prior experience. Obviously, there's high expectations no matter where you're at in corporate America hmm. as far as quarter quarterly results and such. Um, but private equity, as one of the CEOs described, it seems more like change per minute. So I think this is an area, you know, for those who really are high energy, up and coming um, uh, folks who can align with that kind of uh, expectation from a supply chain standpoint, that it offers a lot of great opportunity. Is your belief that folks should have this awareness about what is expected in private equity because they should think to themselves, I might one day have to work in private equity because my company will be bought out? Or is it more on the side of exposing people to this so that they can, if needed, be agile to shift or to seek out their own company in private equity? Well, I think both of the above because okay. the reality is, uh, yeah, there is a lot of merger and acquisitions that continue to go on and anyone who uh, wants to have some foresight and proactivity and understanding the needs and the demands of private equity, this is great for that. But likewise, I think it's a great career that people should consider at a certain point. The, the traditional career path has changed dramatically with people coming into supply chain, going out, coming into sourcing, going into consulting, mm -hmm. you know, going into, uh, like I described, even technical areas and perhaps coming into supply chain or finance. And I just think it's a very exciting world with the person with the right skill base and the right cultural uh, mindset uh, could really enjoy and excel in this environment. So for those who are defensive uh, and their firms get acquired by private equity, I think this is a great session. And for those who want to go uh, more proactively and think about this as a great career opportunity, I think that this session will align with that too. Is there one great lesson learned for you personally from private equity? I think it's an execution. Uh, you know, and, and again, you know, it's not all that uncommon from other corporate world uh, environments, but basically you do have to deliver on the results. But I would say also it's done in a strategic way. It's not just a quick hit. It's something that does need to be sustainable and built. That is the expectation. I think some people have the perception of a, perhaps just a quick hit and move on. But I've seen uh, in the larger companies, the larger private equity entities, they get it. They know that strategic sourcing is something that's a journey and needs to continue to be built as opposed to just a, a quick hit savings. So that is critical as you go forward is building sustainable execution. Hmm. And I would imagine going along with that is also having the right metrics that you can't, it's not just going to be savings year over year. Procurement has to be yeah. delivering more value. 
Yeah, and that was really a reinforcement I've seen of a balanced scorecard, mm -hmm. you know, depending on your business, that it's not just the savings numbers, but it is uh, quality, delivery, uh, sometimes technical capability, enabling growth. Some of the private equity companies, such as the case where I came in, were, were very interested in enabling and uh, growing the business, so you need to make sure your supply base is flexible in that regard, that there's bigger opportunities on the revenue side than the cost side. But again, right. each one of these could be somewhat different depending mm -hmm. on the industry and the private equity company and such. But yeah, I would definitely say don't think of it as just a one-stop cost reduction. Think of it as a balanced scorecard. Right. Well, really, then this session is going to have good insight for anybody, even if at the end of the day you have someone who attends who never ends up in private equity, never never needs to go there. They're still going to be learning something that's valuable to them. Yeah, I think there will be some thought leaders in this session with the uh, group that we have there, Greg Bugler, Larry Bates, and John Wang. So I think uh, people will benefit just from hearing their ideas and, you know, how they're working uh, to make the most from the portfolios that they're managing and taking strategic sourcing to the next level across their companies. Right. Okay, well, then let's talk about the uh, the panelists. Uh, I looked at the list. Two of the three are actually um, operating partners at their respective firms. So maybe without spoiling anything you would hope to cover in the panel, could we read into their job titles as indicative of the the significance or the worth of sourcing in private equity? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. You know, I started uh, in private with a private equity related firm that was owned by private equity back in 2007, and I'd say there's been a revolution over the past 10 years in selective private equity firms, uh, realizing that strategic sourcing can be a competitive advantage, and that they've built additional uh, internal structure uh, to make sure that as their companies go forward, uh, that sourcing can make a big difference. And uh, accordingly, uh, they've built out additional people in their organization, not a huge amount, but enough you know, that they recognize from an operating standpoint, uh, sourcing is one of the key areas that they're looking at to make a difference in uh, in their private equity portfolio. Mm -hmm. Great. So Nassim is also moderating a panel at the conference, and uh, I asked him about his approach for, for moderating. And he talked about the importance of gaining consensus with the panelists beforehand on the topics that they're going to cover. But his role during the actual panel itself is really just to let them do their thing. He'll field the question and let them have the dialogue with each other and with the audience asking questions. So what's your approach? Yeah, I think it's somewhat similar. I'll tee up a few things with the group ahead of time to get them, uh, um, you know, providing some general background. But then it's a jump ball. And, hmm. you know, I know these uh, presenters are very candid and straight to the point. So I think it would be a great session, not only to hear them, but get the dialogue with the group and be open to the questions that can come in the uh, overall session. So looking forward to a fast break, mm. you know, kind of approach where um, I'll, I'll queue up some items and then uh, let, the, uh, let the dialogue go where it may. Given that this is the first co uh, time that this topic is being focused on at ISM, is your hope that in, in future years there'll be more of these lessons learned from, from areas like private equity or uh, is this going to grow into a larger representation of the, the track topics, or what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, I think private equity-type companies definitely are part of the equation, and there are some things that they do differently than the corporate, uh, traditional corporate entities. Right. So I think it's just another, you know, career track opportunity for people, and I think somewhat we'll see what the results are from the session. You know, I think ISM is pretty well focused on what's of the greatest value to the membership. So, you know, if we get great feedback, and this was something of tremendous value, I'm sure we'll further uh, reinforce and build this with other presenters in the future if, um, you know, it's something that can be further integrated into other discussions and dialogues and topics. You know, we certainly could do it that way as well. Great. So we circled this point a little bit before, but what do you hope that an attendee of your panel is going to walk away having gained? What is different uh, from the perspective of these three leaders mm -hmm. on what they're looking for in private equity? You know, what makes the difference between being highly successful or not uh, in this environment? And then, you know, is this a fit for them? Is this something, you know, when they do hear from a recruiter, 
uh, is this something that they would say, yes, man, I'd really like to get an opportunity to work for a private equity firm, or quite frankly, you know, they uh, enjoy their current environment that they're in. How is all the prep going for the conference? Uh, with that many people at your at your company attending, uh, do you have a lot to wrap up over the next couple of weeks? Not that much. Everyone is registered, and, uh, you know, I'm going to get the group together for a pre-run just to make sure, you know, we do have our final people all together and such, and again, encourage them to take full advantage of the sessions that are there. Um, you know, I'm kind of excited personally about the session. I have an opportunity to be a Richter Scholar mentor this year for the first time, and oh, wow. the first time we've got one of our people uh, who were uh, nominated and won the 30 Under 30 Award. Um, so I'm also excited just about, you know, not only the um, – conference breakout sessions, the people track, and the um, obviously uh, moderating this private equity session, but, you know, taking full advantage of everything that ISM has to offer, and, you know, I look forward to, um, you know, uh, from both ends of the scale here, provide a mentoring to a, a young up-and-coming college student who's been recognized by, with the Richter Award, and also, you know, mentoring a young person in our organization who got recognized uh, with the 30 Under 30 Award. Yeah, that's uh, Kyle Alcorn, right? Correct, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I saw his name on the list alongside um, Michael Crosdale, who's one of our project managers, who also won. Um, it's a great program that Thomas Nett and ISM are running the 30 Under 30. So um, we're, we're very honored to be a part of it as well. Great. Great. So, Howard, I think that's all the time we have for today. I uh, really appreciate your time and um, giving us the insight into what people can expect out of the track. It sounds like it's going to be a great session. And my pleasure. Look forward to uh, seeing you at the session. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in to the Source One Countdown to ISM 2016 podcast series. Remember to visit us online at www.sourceoneinc.com. For more insights from our strategic sourcing and procurement experts, check out our blog at www.strategicsorcerer.com. Want to provide us feedback? Have an idea for another podcast? Let us know by emailing us at prrequest at sourceoneinc.com. Thanks for listening.